continuing uh, where we left off. Uh, we just had practice problem number 10. So I'm looking at the lecture document and the next unusual feature or characteristic uh, is gaps, if there are gaps in the data. Um, these you really just identify visually. So a gap is if there is no or very sparse data in intervals between larger groups of data. So I grabbed this distribution uh, I just found on the internet. I thought it was pretty cool. So uh, those are the number of asteroids uh, at different distances from the sun. How many asteroids are there at different distances from the sun? So you can see, uh, if you look closely, and you can, those numbers are kind of small, but uh, there are no asteroids very close to the sun. Makes sense, because they would probably fall into the sun. Uh, but as you get uh, to about 2.1 uh, AU, that is uh, at, um, astronomical units. I believe that's the distance from the Earth to the Sun. So 2.1 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun, uh, there start to be these asteroids um, out beyond Earth. Okay, so, uh, and we get quite a few. There's this big spike. But then all of a sudden, it just drops off. And at 2.5 AU, there are no asteroids at all, or at least very, very few. And then just shortly after that, we get a huge spike again, and there's lots and lots of asteroids until we get to about 2.8, a little bit beyond 2.8, and then there's none. Uh, and then there's a big spike and then none, and you're right, you see these gaps kind of going. Um, my guess is those are where the planets are orbiting. Maybe that first one at about two and a half, that might be um, that might be Jupiter, maybe, right? There's not going to be many asteroids at about the same distance as Jupiter because they would have already gotten sucked into Jupiter, right? Um, okay, so gaps in the data, we want to recognize there could be gaps in your data, and um, you could mention those, say, in a project or something like that. Okay, uh, we have one last way to represent uh, data visually and it's called a stem plot and these are pretty cool I like stem plots uh, stem plots are really good when you have what we'd call a smaller data set so uh, in statistics a small data set would probably be something uh, less than 50 um, and that might seem big uh, but yeah just all in all uh, less than 50 data values is gonna be on the small side for sure okay um, so what is a stem plot? Uh, it's an effective way to quickly see a distribution um, and in quite a bit of detail. Okay, um, so I'm not going to uh, read through those steps to create a regular stem plot. I think it'd be better if we just dive right into the example um, because, well, we're going to do those steps anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and read practice 11. The Modern Language Association provides listening tests that measure understanding of spoken French. The range of scores is 0 to 46. Here are the scores of 21 high school French teachers at the beginning of an intensive summer course. Okay, so we've got all these numbers. What do these represent? Uh, so they gave them a test on how well they understand spoken French. Now these are high school French teachers. And they're going into this summer course, hopefully to try and uh, really improve on their French by the time the next fall comes around. Uh, now the scores are go from uh, from zero to forty six. So I'm, um, I'm not sure if it's out of forty six, like the person who got a forty six got a perfect. Um, but in any case, uh, a lot of these French teachers did really, really poorly. <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning um, on their understanding of spoken French. So I'm not sure what that says, but okay. Anyway, uh, whatever the context, we've got our data here. And in part A, we're going to create a regular stem plot. Uh, there is a more complex version. I'll show you in a second, but okay, a regular stem plot. So how do we do this? Um, well, you can see in my notes here, um, you begin, it's, the name is kind of cool. It's, it's going to look um, kind of like a tree, right? Um, so this is going to be like the trunk of the tree. So what I've done is put 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what that represents 
are the tens places. You can ignore my note here uh, for now. Uh, these are the tens places of the different data values. So a zero in the tens place, and then a one, a two, a three, a four. And now what we're going to do, we're just going to go through that list of numbers, and we're going to write the ones places. And the ones places are going to stem out from the tens places on the other side of the line. So we'll begin uh, the only data value there with zero as the tens place is the nine, right? So we're going to put zero nine. Somebody scored a nine on this test. Uh, and then next, uh, we've got two with a one as their tens place, right? 15 and 18. So we're going to put a five and an eight. And the eight, let me make that a little clearer, the eight goes right next to the five. It looks like 58. But we, because we know we're looking at a stem plot or someone else would know that, they would know, okay, someone scored 15 and someone else scored 18 because these are ones places, that's the tens place. All right, then moving on, I think if that makes sense to you, we pretty much got it, but we'll, we'll finish, we'll do the rest of it. Um, in the 20, we, uh, 20 tens place, we had 20. We had 23. We had another 23, so we'll write that again. And we had 26. So we're going to write 0, 3, 3, 6. And then in the 30s, we had 30. We had a second 30. We had a 1, 31, and another 31. We had 32, 34, 35, 37, 39. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9. Okay, and then finally to the 40s, we had a 40. We had 42. We had another 42. 45 and a 46 was the highest. So we can see all of the data right there. Um, and in fact, not only can we see all of the data very nicely, this is actually um, serves a lot of the purposes of a histogram at the same time. Okay, so that's my note. This is a more detailed histogram on its side. Uh, what do I mean by on its side? Well, this is kind of nice that I can do this um, on camera, right? If you were to, let me just take the camera and rotate it. If I was to turn the camera this way, right? So you can think of these as the bins, right? bin number one, bin number two, three, four, and that's how high they are, like how many digits there are kind of makes, you know, and that's kind of nifty. Now normally in a histogram, right, we can't see, we don't know what the values are inside of each bin, but in a stem plot we do. So it's a histogram, but then even more detailed. Now, again, this is good for small data sets. If you get huge data sets, like thousands of pieces of information, a stem plot's probably not the best way to do it. You probably just want to go with the histogram or something, um, or the box plot. But if it's a small data set, it's not too overwhelming for anybody looking at it. And then we've got part B there. Describe the shape of the distribution. OK, now this is where the histogram's going to come in nicely. What is the shape? And what you can do is just sort of like draw sort of like these, you know, this curve sort of around it to kind of give you the shape of that histogram. And then, you know, I won't, I won't move the camera again, almost like tilt your head to the side so you're looking up. And we'll try and describe the shape. So a shape, uh, there's two attributes of a shape, right? When we say the shape, we're really, you know, getting at what's the modality and what is the symmetry. Okay, so what is the modality here? Well, you'd say it's unimodal. There's this one big bump at the center. Okay, I agree. Unimodal. All right, how about the symmetry? How would you describe the symmetry here? You'd say, well, you know, this part right there, these three are more or less symmetric, but we've got some other data toward the low end. So we're going to say that is skewed. And because, you know, if we were to tilt it, this would be on the left side. Uh, these are the smaller values. This is skewed to the left. Unimodal and skewed left is the shape. OK. 
Now to wrap uh, the section up, uh, just beneath practice problem number 11, um, I talk about a back-to-back -back stem plot. So uh, sometimes it's appropriate to make this is a regular stem plot. Sometimes it's better to make a back-to-back -back stem plot, and I'll highlight that here. Uh, it consists of two stem plots with leaves in each direction. Okay, so for example, uh, these are the weights of 50 high school students given in pounds. Now focus just uh, at first at the all students um, distribution there. So that one is just a regular stem plot. Uh, when we give all students, right, you see uh, the tens places and then, you know, when the tens places become two digits, well, you know, that's a, that goes into the hundreds place, right? So the lightest student um, of those 50 sampled was 92 pounds and the heaviest high school student of those 50 sampled was uh, at the very bottom there, 217 pounds. You think, okay, all right, yeah. Um, you know, we've got the weights of all those 50 students, right? And a lot of people there kind of, a lot of people in the 110 uh, range, and then um, we get another bump around 150, 160. So you think, wow, you know, that's, that's spread out um, quite a bit, um, these 50 high school students. You think for a second, you know what? Uh, when kids are in high school, um, you know, they're, they're still growing, <laughs> you know, of course. Um, and when you enter high school, uh, compared to when you leave high school, a lot has changed uh, in your body for a lot of people. Um, so maybe it's better not to just lump them all together into one distribution. Maybe we should identify who the younger ones are and who the older ones are. And so that's what you see in the back-to-back -back stem plot to the right. So you see it divided into the underclassmen on the left and the upperclassmen on the right. Um, and you can tell, yeah, all right, the underclassmen, those are the freshmen and sophomores, uh, they, you know, have less weight. They're, they weigh less, um, generally speaking. And obviously there's going to be some overlap, but then the upperclassmen, you know, they take the bulk of those higher weights, uh, and there's more of them. We can see that even now there, there, there was more of them in this particular sample. Um, and the ones that get up into, you know, the 190, 200, 210 categories, those were all upperclassmen. And um, so that, that makes sense and gives us more, that just gives us uh, more information than what we were missing when we just did the regular stem plot. Now, so sometimes, a regular stem plot is exactly what you want, um, but other times you, you want to divide it up and do the back-to-back. -back. Uh, again, something to keep in mind, you know, when you're doing your projects and that sort of stuff. Okay, hey, uh, it was a long chapter, but that is chapter two. Um, go check out uh, the rest of the homework for chapter two, any of those problems that um, did not look familiar before. Um, hopefully they are... Uh, ringing a bell now, um, and I will see you guys in class.